my road to where I am today has not been all smooth sailing. In fact, I love to tell this story. It started with a breakup. What's up, y'all? Welcome to Monday Magic. My name is Rob Green. So excited to be hanging out with you today. Each week on this video series, I offer you tips, tricks, and inspiration to help you build your business, wow your clients, and create photo magic. And today, I wanted to share with you a little about my photography journey and just all the bumps and hiccups along the way that got me from being a guy that was a career youth ministry guy that was had no idea that photography was even going to be on my radar to starting a business that has generated six figures for each of the years that I've been in business. This is year number six now. And so hopefully from all the hard lessons learned and all the mistakes made that I've had in my journey, I can help you in yours to be able to have a little uh, smoother path than I had. But uh, each week, that's the goal is tips, tricks, and inspiration for you to help you in your photography journey. In fact, below this video, you will find a link to my giveaway check checklist, the checklist that I use every time I run a giveaway to make sure that giveaway is a success. Now, like I mentioned, my road to where I am today has not been all smooth sailing. In fact, I love to tell this story. It started with a breakup. Yes, I was dating a girl that went to my church. We saw each other like five days a week. So when it ended, there was no getting away from each other. I was like, I got to get out of town. This is crazy. So I packed up my bags. I bought a ticket out to San Diego. I'd never even been to California before. I rented a car. I'd borrowed her camera, by the way, flew out to San Diego, rented a car, and drove up the West Coast taking pictures uh, all along the way, learning how to use this DSLR that I had borrowed from my ex. It was hilarious. But by the time I got back from that trip, I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I love this. This is so much fun. Like, I can't, I, I gotta get one of these things, which is interesting because going all the way back to when I graduated from Kennesaw State University, I had always had this dream of starting a creative business that would be what made a living for me. But in my mind, that was gonna be things like graphic design, like branding, web design, Photography was not at all on the radar. And so what I quickly learned when I got my first camera in 2015 was that everybody loves to have great pictures of themselves. Like not everybody wants to have an album cover or a logo. Not everybody needs that stuff, but everybody wants great pictures of themselves. Well, I start taking pictures. I'm doing practice sessions, trying to learn my way around the camera. And next thing I know, I am going from free shoots to charging something for the first time. And charging something for the first time was terrifying. I felt so unworthy. I felt like I was ripping people off. Maybe you felt that way. It was just, I just couldn't believe I was doing this. One of the things I did in this was I really tried to sit down with as many people that were doing what I wanted to do, which was photography, and doing it really well. And I just picked their brains and asked them lots of questions. Well, come to find out, charging $150 for a two hour session where people get all the rights to the images afterwards was not ripping them off, it was ripping me off. So I quickly sat down and tried to restructure everything about how I price my business and learn as much as I could about how to price my sessions. And honestly y'all, coming out of this, this was all in a span of about six to eight months where I went from heartbroken and traveling up the West Coast to now I'm making money on photo sessions on the side of my full-time job working at a church. And I, the biggest lesson learned for me out of this was that, man, it's possible for beauty to come from ashes. The thing that you're walking through right now that makes you feel like, gosh, I can never get to where I want to go with my dreams. Just know it's possible that in this season you're in is the birth point of something amazing that's going to come down the road that you can't even see. I never could have envisioned in that moment traveling up the West Coast of California that I would one day be a full-time photographer. It was not even on my radar. And six months later, here I was moving into sort of the second phase of my business journey, which was setting five-year goals. And I don't mean, when I say setting five-year goals, I don't mean 
Like I just said, where do I want to be five years from now? I mean, I had a friend challenge me in December of 2015 to set specific goals for each of the next five years of my business. How many portrait sessions did I want to do? How many weddings did I want to do? How many, I was still thinking about artwork and album design at this point. So how many logos did I want to do? How many uh, album covers? How many web designs? I want, I thought through all those things and I thought through them in terms of like, what do I think I could charge for this stuff? But also like, what do I have capacity to do while still having a full-time job? Because let's be real, for a lot of us, when we're starting out in our photography journey, we're also having to factor in, hey, I have this full-time job that I'm committed to and I don't wanna cheat that job, so I need to do that well and still find a way to grow my business on the side. And that's hard. But as I was going through this, as I was going through mapping out all these goals, I figured out that it was gonna be around year three where I was finally going to be able to, if I hit all my goals for year three, I was finally going to be able to be making enough that I felt like I'd probably be okay letting go of a full-time salary, was still very scared about that, but felt like I'd be making enough to do that, and yet at the same time was also probably reaching a threshold where the volume of work I would have to do to make any more money would be more than I could handle with my full-time job. So I kind of had circled on my calendar back in December 2015 that December 2018 was probably where I was going to be transitioning out of my job. Well, y'all, lesson number two for me in my photography journey is that direction, not intention, determines the de destination. You may have all the great intentions of starting a photography business and being successful and doing great things with your business, but all the great intentions in the world don't get you anywhere. You need a direction, you need a strategy, you need goals. And so for me, what happened was as I laid out these goals for five years of my business, within six months, because I had something to start working towards that I could see, hey, am I winning? Is this working? Within six months, I had somehow managed to reach the three-year goal mark. I was blown away. And so for me, this was a huge confirmation and that a door was opening to make the jump to full time. Now, that brings me to the third phase of the business journey, which was taking the leap. I got to tell you this because you may feel like I can never make the leap in my business. I don't know how I could let go of a full-time salary and just depend on this. That seems scary. You may be thinking, I, I just need to jump right in because Rob says he did it. Both of those ideas, not necessarily the right thinking. Here's all I want to tell you about this is there's going to come a point in your business where it will be time to take the leap. And that moment will probably come before you are a smash hit success with your photography business. That's just the reality. There's going to be some measure of faith required in taking that leap and going full time. For me, that meant I was making at the time, I was making about $50,000. Uh, in my full-time job, and now I had grown. I One of my goals, I wanted to make $37,000, roughly about 75% of that in my side business with photography. Well, when I hit that goal, I was able then to go in and say with confidence, hey, I'm gonna make this jump. I'm gonna take the leap and go full-time. Well, that didn't mean that internally I wasn't still freaking out going, oh my gosh, like that's just, now all I have is that $37,000 piece. And that seems scary because we're going that the numbers don't add up on that. Here's what you don't realize is on the other side of your leap, on the other side of going to full time, if you had a job where let's say you were working 40 hours a week and let's say you were working 40 weeks out of the year, you're probably working more than that, but let's just say for round numbers sake, let's say 40 hours a week, 40 weeks a year. That's 1600 hours back into your schedule. Now, whatever you've been making on the side of your full-time job, you have been doing that in a limited number of hours. And now you're talking about adding another 1600 hours where you can be meeting with vendors if you're a wedding photographer. You can be meeting with potential clients. You can be updating your web page. You can be working on your client experience and your email content and all of the things that successful photographers are doing in their business. You will have 1600 hours all of a sudden back into your schedule to work on these things. So you cannot imagine what is on the other side of that leap because in your mind, all you know is I have a full-time job and then I come home to what feels like a full-time business and somehow I need to be a good spouse, a good son or 
or daughter, a good sister or brother, a, a good parent, whatever it may be, you're trying to do all the things. And when you take that leap, so much is going to open up in terms of your schedule, in terms of the potential for your business. Now, again, that doesn't mean just go take the leap before you've even had people validate that, hey, this is a business that is working and growing. You want to figure out, how do people want my services yet? Have, have I reached a point where I'm gaining traction in my business and I'm seeing momentum start to build? And if you're seeing that momentum start to build, amazing, then that's where you can start to look and go, where's that that point on my calendar, on my business growth timeline where I'm going to make the jump. For me, it was about 75% of my full-time income. In retrospect, I probably could have done that at about 50% simply because of all that I learned that was awaiting me on the other side. Literally within the first four months of being full-time, I had my first $20,000 a month as a business. Mind-blowing when that's you have no frame of reference for that to build off of. All of a sudden I'm going, whoa, there, there's a potential here that I did not see when I was coming home and pulling off my web updates on late nights and, and weekends. And that brings me to the final phase, the phase that I am still in, the phase that I am loving and embracing right now with my business. And that's just the phase of the struggle to grow and, and build and evolve as a business. And I would just say, don't sweat the struggle. For me, I bought my first flash on my way to a wedding. I was so embarrassed by this. It was several weddings in, I had somehow managed to pull off my first several weddings without a flash, just cranking up my ISO, maybe you've been there. And I finally got to a wedding that I just knew with this venue, with the time of day, the season of the year it was being in the winter, there was no way I was going to be able to pull this off without a flash. So I bought my first flash on the way to a wedding, had no idea how to use it, was literally getting tips from the photography guy as I'm walking out the door of the store. And I just got to that wedding and thank God I learned on the fly a few things that became really pivotal to how I shoot with flash. But that was just straight up miracle because I was so embarrassed that night. These people had paid me all this money to capture their wedding and I didn't know how to capture it when the sun went down. But out of that struggle, came a desire to help other photographers never experience the shame and embarrassment that I felt that night. And now as a result of that, I teach a course on flash for photographers, the kind of photographers who are going, man, I've got a wedding tomorrow and I need to know how to shoot with flash. What do I do? Well, you take the course and the next thing you know, you're shooting with flash and it's working. It, the stuff our students have done has been amazing. Fast forward a little further. I'm also trying to crack into the college market. And right as I'm about to go full time, I lose access to my key relationship on campus that was gonna be my key to working with college seniors and sororities. I had no idea what I was gonna do. So what did I do? I decided, you know what? I'm gonna run a giveaway and just see what happens. And then I decided, you know what? I'm also gonna put out an application and see if I can generate some interest in people being campus reps for my business. Well, these things that were for me were done out of desperation because I just lost my key relationship on campus. My key reason to be on TCU's campus was gone. I all of a sudden was running these giveaways, building these campus rep teams. And now I have courses on giveaways, courses on campus rep teams, courses on running a college and sorority business with your photography. And all of this birthed out of the struggle and out of the hardship that came in my business, trying to figure out what do I do? How do I build a business as a dude that's out of college and has no reason to be on TCU's campus? How do I build inroads? It's not like I have some cute wife, you know, that all the girls love to be around. Like I had no reason to be on this campus. And now I have grown this thing to the point that we, this past spring, photographed 10% of the senior girls at TCU. So whatever your scenario is, whatever your struggle is, just know you don't have to sweat the struggle. That's part of your journey and it's gonna be part of the story you tell down the road and it's gonna be part of how you're able to help others learn and grow and how you're able to better serve your clients down the road. So that's a little of my photography journey. I'd love to hear from you. What's your photography journey been like? Shoot me a message in the comments. Feel free to like, subscribe to these videos. Uh, we'd lo I'd love to keep in touch with you and get to know your story a little more and hopefully one day we'll be reminiscing about our photography journeys together. So have a great day. We'll see you next week.